Mi Chai Bon Cha was an actor from Pechiburi, Thailand, who starred in many Thai films during the 1950s and late 1960s. He was a superstar in Thailand, to say the very least. However, his life would come to a tragic end, unexpectedly on a film set out of all places. Need is filming the final scene of a movie called In Si Thong. In the scene, he was supposed to climb up a rope ladder that hung beneath a helicopter before it flew into the sunset. This final scene would also serve as his final moments. Well, you see, when the helicopter started flying, it made a miscalculation and reached altitudes too high for the rope ladder to be climbed. This made it very hard for Neat, who was only hanging off the bottom rung with his hands. The helicopter pilot was unaware of this fallacy and continued to fly upwards until eventually, Neat lost his grip and fell to his death. And all of it was captured on camera. When the film first surfaced in 1970, they made the bizarre decision to include the footage. The way it was used in the film is unknown, as it was removed in the 2005 DVD release. Instead, it was replaced with more footage of the helicopter, and a scroll of text that commemorated the actor's life. Ever since then, the disturbing footage of Neat falling to his death has not seen the light of day, and those in possession of it are unlikely to release it out of respect for Neat's legacy. Police say there are even more sadistic murder charges Paul is facing. The gruesome killing. When you look in their eyes, there's, there's just nothing there. Paul Bernardo and Carla Hamolka were not your average couple. They partook in acts such as and murder during the years 1990 to 1992 in Ontario, Canada, with at least three of their victims being minors. But this was not Paul's first time doing such acts, as he also was found to be responsible for several severe murders prior to meeting Carla. Together, they both and murdered Leslie Mahaffey, Kristen French, and Carla's own sister, Tammy. A search warrant was launched on Paul, and police ended up finding a videotape containing the loss of a 15-year-old victim. More tapes were discovered 16 months later in a light fixture that was in his upstairs bathroom. In total, six videotapes were found in Paul's house. The tapes are said to be three and a half hours long in length, and document the crimes committed against their victims. These incriminating tapes were shown in trial against Paul and the proof was undeniable. They were both convicted of their crimes, but many outsiders disagreed with the light sentence that Carla received of only 12 years. Today, Carla walks free and currently resides in Quebec. As for Paul, he is still in prison and frequently gets attacked by inmates. When the trial was over, Canadian authorities stated that the tapes served no more use and therefore thought it was best the tapes be destroyed. However, the transcripts of the tapes remain preserved, and can still be accessed to this day. This is the face of a serial killer, with his weapon of choice, a powerful crossbow. If you kill someone to kill yourself, or kill Paris, I don't know, I don't know. There's like deep issues inside me. Stephen Griffiths was your typical troubled teen with a criminal past, from Bradford to West Yorkshire. When he was 17 years old, he stabbed a supermarket manager with a knife, which resulted in him being thrown in jail for three years. He also spent an additional two years in jail after putting a knife up to a girl's throat. He admitted to his desires of becoming a serial killer, and in the previous year he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and psychopathy. He eventually straightened up his act in 2009, but beneath the surface, his fixation on becoming a serial killer remained a brewing within. He was so interested, in fact, that he even studied for a PhD in homicide studies at the University of Bradford. This behavior was noted by local police, and he was kept under close surveillance due to suspicion of him becoming an actual serial killer. He was also in possession of hunting weapons that were eventually confiscated after he was found to have read books on dismemberment. 
Suspicions grew to a point where police contacted the owners of Stefan's flat, requesting they install a better CCTV for extra measure, in case something were to happen. But as they say, anything that could go wrong will go wrong. And in this case, it went wrong. Stefan's first victim was a 43-year-old woman named Susan Rushworth. She ended up in his flat where she lost her life by getting shot in the head with a crossbow. She was then dismembered in the bathtub, partially eaten. He disposed of her remains in river air, but ultimately, they were never found. After this, he found his second victim, a 31-year-old woman named Shelley Armitage. He took her to his flat where he yet again claimed her life using a crossbow. He then proceeded to tie her up in his bathtub before painting a cynical message on her back while saying, I am the Ven Perea. I am the bloodbath artist. Here is a model who is assisting me. He then went on to dismember and consume parts of her remains, all while he recorded the entire process on his mobile phone. Unlike Susan, however, her remains were found floating in river air, which in turn gave closure to her relatives. Sometime later, Stefan lost his mobile phone on a train. This was a big mistake for Stefan, and in a matter of no time, the footage recorded was seen by the eyes of authority. The phone also contained footage of Susan's murder and a photo of Shelley's dead body as well. But despite this, it did not deter Stefan from finding his third and final victim, 36-year-old Suzanne Bemeers. Suzanne would end up making a run for it and bolted down the corridors. However, Stefan quickly caught up to her and tackled her to the ground, where he ultimately ended her life with a crossbow shot to the head. While dragging his victim back to the flat, he realized that the whole murder was captured on CCTV camera. In a fit of rage, he exited the flat and flipped off the camera, before returning back to his victim and proceeding to dismember and partially eat her remains. He then went on to dump her remains in River Air, where he had previously disposed of his other victims. But just an hour later, he had the urge to kill again. He spotted a 28-year-old Rosalind Edmondson, who was on her way to pick up something. He went up to the woman and invited her to come back to his flat. At first, she went with him, but later on decided to go to her own flat. Stefan accepted her decision and returned home shortly after. On May 24, 2009, a caretaker named Peter Gee looked over the CCTV footage and was shocked to see what the camera captured. He immediately knew to contact authorities, and they arrested Stefan. Stefan had no intention of trying to deny the crimes he committed, and coined himself the Crossbow Cannibal. On December 21st of that year, Stefan was charged with all three murders of his victims. He was sentenced to life in prison, with no possibility of parole. To this day, he spends his time behind bars, facing the consequences of his actions. Only a handful of CCTV footage was shown on television with NBC airing a segment showing Stefan flipping off the camera and attempting to lure Rosalind Edmondson. However, the remaining photo and video showcasing his crimes were never shown publicly, and are lost media. <laughs> 